Welcome back, everybody. Uh, it's been a while since we've done an Armory Chat. This is going to be Armory Chat episode 32. I know this because I had to look it up because I didn't remember how long it had been. I'm doing a quick update on the Bren rifle display gun build. Um, uh, right now, it, it, it's a display gun, and we're trying to figure out whether it's, uh, whether it's going to end up being revived or not. So... I'll give the quick update as to where we're at. So what we had happen was we came into a brand gun, display gun, very cheap. And uh, for the record, let me go ahead and get this information. So those are the little ask. It is a Mark I made in 1941. Um, there's some kind of weird D mark or see if I can get it in the light. I tried to get the light. So there's a right there is a D it's probably inverted because you know Facebook live so I assume if uh, so anyway what what we do know Bren gun we assume it's a 303 I'm not 100% certain on that it is a mark one it was made in 1941 and it um, I do not know where it was made um, if uh, if you see markings or have any input on this uh, let us know and we'll, you know, we'll try to work with you and figure out and, you know, figure out where it is. Um, as a matter of fact, that's going to be a running theme throughout this entire video is I'm going to need some help from some people out there more knowledgeable on brands to, um, to know what the hell we're looking at here. So long story short, we have a Bren gun that was cut and put together as a display gun. So... Um, the, our regulars who saw a, a post on Facebook I don't know, earlier this, well, what is today? Today's Thursday. So earlier this week where I was beating on, maybe it's last week, I was beating on this gun with a mallet trying to get it apart. And it was so tight, literally I was wanging on it, then I had to take calipers and measure just to even see if the damn thing was moving. That's how tight this was. So the issue is this had been welded up probably with the understanding it's never going to be fired again so so i guess the first question is chances are the welds that currently exist when they cut these they on a bren the upper is the quote registered receiver in the u.s that's that's the that's what has to be cut so this has been cut apart and re-welded and when we took it apart what we discovered was I don't know if it's been band cut or whether it was a very, very thin torch cut, but it wasn't a crazy destructive torch cut, as, I mean, as far as I can tell. Now, the weld up doesn't look like it's quite going to make the grade, see if I can show any of it, for, for function, but, you know, we'll have to determine that. So, but also what we discovered is when you take the magazine out, you could see there was a block that they've tack welded into the receiver. And so I figured this block was going to be, I don't know, two, three inches long. Well, open it up and we'd figure out this block goes from, actually you can see the cut, the type of cut here. This is, this cut is indicative of of the cuts that were done on this gun they don't seem to be like an in you know i don't know like a half inch or inch long really destructive uh torch cut i mean i maybe that's a good job being welded up but that that seems pretty small to me that almost resembles a band cut which is good news but they tacked in the bar my finger is touching the metal bar they tacked it in all the way up to the front and I, to, to quote demill the gun which is you know per ATF regulations because if this receiver is together and it's not deactivated it's a post machine gun which we're not allowed to have so it's a deactivated piece of metal right now it's a destroyed gun and so you know it's been a, you know a couple of steps have been taken to make sure it doesn't function you know everyone kind of gets an idea we're not you know we're not dealing with noobs here so where is what we also discovered and again this is pretty standard 
the barrel, I can show this here, because the Bren feeds from the top, let's see if I got this right. So the Bren feeds from the top, and so the bullets are coming in. The feed ramp, I guess, is also at the top because the bullets are coming in from the top and have to feed into the chamber. What they've done, if I can get to see this here, they've definitely, they've, they put a, a, I guess a little tack bead, I guess onto the, onto the chamber. And it looks like if you can see, there's even some pieces of residue of, I guess the, uh, the, the welding material, you know, some like light bar work. So they tacked the barrel. The barrel is otherwise unobstructed. So it's, uh, it's open all the way down. I mean, it's got, um, you can actually see all the way down through it. Uh, we haven't cal we haven't measured it. It's probably a 303. Um, it, you know, I mean, we'll have to, if someone knows the markings that we can tell what the Brits or whoever had this gun did to, to tell caliber markings, that would be awesome. But cleaning this up should be pretty easy. Um, or clean, um, yeah, cleaning up this weld should be pretty easy. So the good news is, from what I understand, now if you know about Bren guns or you know about rebuild Bren guns and you have information, chime in below, send me an email, leave a comment if you see that we're about to make a mistake especially if i'm don't want to make a mistake that ends up breaking the law so we got to be real careful with it and i'll address that in a second but if you have any advice on that um i mean understand i know nfa laws so i don't need you explain to me how machine guns work i don't need you explain to me you know 86 and hughes and 68 and the amnesty i understand all that but maybe some particulars some of you might be able to address as I go forward, we'll go from there. So, next question is, oh, for those asking, this lower, which is not a controlled part or receiver part, uh, has no cuts in it. I guess that's pretty standard. Freeze pit tells me that's standard. It does have a, um, does have a, a trigger uh, and safety and, um, I don't know if that's a, like a, like a discon disconnect or a sear, I don't know what that is. It's, there's a recoil guide, and uh, uh, but the gun had no bolt and bolt carrier, which is the big question I'm going to be coming up with here. So, oh, sorry about that. The question is, the first one is, since this is a Mark One, does anybody know if a Mark Two bolt and bolt carrier will work in a Mark One? If you have the answer, send it to me. If you have a bolt carrier for a Mark One and want to sell it to me, maybe, maybe we should be we should talk. Here's my next question. These guns fired from an open bolt, and I know there's all these people converting them into semi-autos. Uh, are they using existing bolts and bolt carriers and modifying those for ATF standards so they fire from a closed bolt or do you have to buy some special semi-auto bolt carrier system I mean because obviously it's got to fire from a closed bolt so it can't fire when the bolt comes home so it has to have a hammer or striker that would come through it so are, you, are they modifying existing bolt carriers and bolts, or do you have to buy something completely? The reason I'm asking is, do I need to get a bolt or bolt carrier to reactivate this as a semi-auto? Uh, do I get an existing one that's mil -serp, or do I have to buy something special? Because what I don't want to do is I want to be, I, I want to be very careful to avoid constructive possession. And what that is, for those of you that don't know, for it's kind of far how machine guns work, what I don't want to do is this bar in particular, I don't want to take that bar out, even though it this upper receiver is a little wonky, there's a little bit of warp in it, this may not even actually be even in, in spec to function, it just looks like a, a together receiver. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to take this bar out, 
have a have a semi-auto bolt and bolt or have a bolt and bolt carrier original and all of a sudden I'm into the constructive possession of a machine gun realm. So before I before I take this bar out and analyze what's underneath this bar, I need to know specifically what the deal is with the bolt and bolt carrier, which is why I'm kind of asking everybody to do that. Now, one of the big questions that seems to come up that I was able to discuss, see if I can show it here, is it? <clears throat> one of the, I'm not 100% certain, but if you can see here, when you look at, when you see these kits and they're cut or they're put together, people smarter than me will say that if the cut goes through the, I don't know what to, what to call it. I guess it would be like a trunnion or the, the mounting area for the barrel because these have a quick chain barrel. Trunnion's not the right word, but a lot of times they'll be cut through where the barrel locks into the upper. And if my understanding is people that do this for a living that reactivate these as semi-autos, when this when they're cut like that, they either, I don't know if it's, I'm not sure if it's the economic feasibility that they don't want to dick with it and it's just too much work to try to get it back together or whether it's actually just destroyed, destroyed. But it doesn't appear to my untrained eye that this is cut in that way, so that's good news. But I need to get an answer on, obviously, I wanna remove that bar, but I don't wanna remove the bar until I know what the issue is with some of the parts, you know, before we go from there. So what else was there on this? Um, uh, the upper's cut, it looks like the upper's cut okay. Uh, the lower is not cut. The barrel is in good shape. Um, bipod, uh, the quick la quick detach latch for the uh, for the barrel. Uh, for those curious, the bipod is marked JL or JI, and I don't know if this is the original bipod or not for this gun, or if it's just a, you know obviously just a put together. But if that helps determine, I'm thinking JL JI might be Canadian. I don't know. But, I don't know, I mean, if it's, uh, yeah, if, I would, you know, I don't know. When, when did Canada switch to 7.62? If they ever, did Canada ever switch to 7.62? Is there a small chance, however small, that that ever remote, that this brand could, instead of being 3 or 3, could be 7.62? That would be phenomenal, but we all know that's not true. Um, let's see here, the magazine. Uh, the magazine has no markings on it at all. Um, I don't even actually know that it's a Bren magazine. Um, I mean, it fits into the gun. It has MA on the bottom of it. So that's, I guess, really pretty much it. So if anybody has any feedback, send me email if you don't want to talk about it, obviously, publicly. If you know anybody that does Bren reactivations into semi-autos that maybe I could send photographs of this up or two, um, please, uh, you know, drop me a note or an email. Uh, you can do it on the website, john1911.com. There'll be a, uh, a link uh, below this video that you can, you know, talk to us directly and, you know, we can deal with it. Also, Freeze was asking, Freeze is leaning towards, obviously, Freeze is our kind of our resident gunsmith. He is actually wanting to maybe just rebuild it ourselves since the since so, so, so much of the work is done. But what he's asking for is there is a jig system out there that I guess you can buy. If you are a Milserp collector and you want to either create a wall hanger or you want to reactivate into a semi-auto a cut receiver you can buy a jig lay your parts into the jig and then weld up your 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 cuts and then hopefully your dimensions will be correct freeze is wondering if someone has a jig that we could buy or borrow um, and we could maybe drop this into that jig to possibly measure fitment and dimensions to see if this thing is dimensionally okay because that's going to be the big issue is if it's not correct if it's dimensionally screwed up and as much as i had to hammer on this to get this apart it's a good chance that this thing 
dimension, they may have to be recut and rewelded, which may not be economically feasible. So we want to try to do as much of the work as we can in house and go from there. So I think that about covers everything on the brand. I know it's been kind of dark on this, but uh, it, 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 we keep the, the 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 bottom line on this is we kept expecting to figure out that this this was no way this was going to be economical to reactivate. It was just going to be cheaper to buy one that's been reactivated as a semi-auto. But the, every time we get deeper into this gun, we find good news, not bad news. So we're going to keep pushing ahead and see what we can find. So everybody, thank you for your time. Uh, hit the blog page, john1911.com. Remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun. Everybody, have a good day.